Hello there, welcome back to the never-ending series, Pimp My Filter. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a hang-on-the-back canister filter. Now, I've taken a look at at least another one, possibly two of these in previous episodes. I think the best of which was probably the Danel Scapers Flow. But this one has the potential to be better and at a much lower price. And this one is the All Pond Solutions Hob or HOB Hang On Back Dash 500. Now I will put links to this filter and also the filter media and anything else that might be of use to you in the video description and in the pinned comment. Now the 500 in the title comes from the fact that the little pump in here will pump 500 litres per hour which doesn't sound like much, but when you've got an internal filter or you've got a hang on the back filter that isn't lifting the water very far or pushing it up very far, like it would be in a standard canister filter that would generally sit underneath the tank, the pump doesn't need to be massive. So 500 liters per hour should deliver a decent flow. And the manufacturer says that this one is suitable for tanks up to 200 liters or 53 US gallons. Now I doubt very much whether it will actually be suitable for a tank of that size due to the reasonably low flow rate and the limited capacity for biological media. But we'll get it out of the box, we'll take a good look at it and then we'll just assess it and see what it's like. Because I bought this one myself, I will actually be running this one. So I'm going to put it together, put it on the tank, show you exactly how it goes on the tank, plug it in and we'll see what the flow is like. This one will be a really good test of this filter. Most of the time I'm reviewing other people's filters, so I can't really get them all wet and mucky and send them back in a wet state, you know, they've got to go back dry. This one doesn't matter if it goes back wet, because it ain't going nowhere, it's mine. However, I will be giving this one away in a future video, so look out for that, and it will be pimped up as well. Now this does come with minimal instructions, but the instructions are good enough, and if you're halfway handy, you can just look at the back of the box and see how it goes together. And there's only a limited amount of ways that this thing can actually go together. So the chances of getting it wrong are pretty slim. So basically what we have here is a slimline canister filter. With little hooks on here that allow it to hook over the side of a tank to become a hang on the back filter. And these hooks are adjustable. I've got it set for the smallest one because... My tank is only about 6mm thick, that will be enough. So they fit on the side like that. You've got a little rubbery attachment that slots on the bottom. You'll see this when it's actually on the tank, but basically that just keeps it nice and level and it stops it from rocking about. You've got the normal configuration on the top, you've got your in and your out. So I'll attach the pipes to that and then we're pretty much ready just to throw it on the tank. Oh, but we need to have a look inside of it first. Okay, that's the outie. That one just goes on. Tightens up. When these are tight, they actually do move around very easily. So I just hope that that stays watertight. Okay. Right. That is it. That's where the water's drawn in. That's where the water is blown out. That can be moved. Your little duckbill thing on the end can be put up and down and you can actually swap this out for a spray bar as well. I'll just take this top off and then I'll bring the camera in and we'll take a look at exactly what is going on inside of this filter. And that comes off well. But we do have a decent seal around the outside there. It does sit in a bit of a cavity though, so you will have to ensure that that stays clean. Otherwise you will have the risk of leaks, which you will on most sort of similar filters. We'll take a close look. Okay, so that's our little pump head. It sits on the top of this canister. There's our pump. And that actually draws from the bottom of the canister, which you'll see in a moment. And that is where the water pours in from your intake. So the water's drawn up here, drops in through all the foams, through the media, and then is sucked back out 
and blown out through this back into your tank. So we'll take this out of the way now and have a look at the canister itself. Here we've got the clips that allow it to sit on the side of your tank and we can pull those if it's a particularly wide tank but as I say it mine is a narrow tank so mine is on the smallest setting and if you want to take those off they just come off like that these are pretty good quality plastic there is a bit of flex in them so you shouldn't be breaking these all right let's take a look at the trays inside the canister Now you'll have noticed there, they actually are clipped together. And because you've got a bit of a handle here, you can lift them all out in one go. That is a very good idea because the space inside of here is quite restricted for getting your hands into. So it is absolutely necessary that these things do clip together to be lifted out as one unit. And to take them apart, you just squeeze on the sides and they come apart. So. This is our top one. Our pump sits on here, on top of this rubber seal, so it actually draws the water up through this pipe from the very bottom of the filter. So these trays actually work from top to bottom. So the water pours in here, it drops through this tray into the next one, into the next one, into the next one, and so on, until it gets to the bottom, and then it's drawn back out to the pump. In here, we've got only fine pads. That is marvellous because 99 times out of 100 the stuff that comes in the filters is crap. Why bother putting crap filter media in if you're just going to throw it away anyway? You are going to use these things eventually although you only need to use one at a time. So we will keep four of these as spares. And you can see they're a decent thickness, well cut. Um, yeah, they're a decent quality fine pad. So that's awesome. Straight away with this thing, you're getting four spare pads. Groovy. So that leaves us with five media trays and a top tray, which would generally have nothing in it. But we can do something with that to catch a little bit of muck. I'll show you that in a moment. In the next tray down, we've got the fine pad. But I think we'll start from the bottom and we'll actually fill the bottom of our filter with four trays of bio gravel. I've already taken the liberty of cutting a few foams and various bits and bobs. We'll keep those off to one side. And in each one of these bags, we've got 300 grams of bio gravel, which is a porous gravel made from the same stuff as bio home. And that supports aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. So really we're aiming for a full cycle whenever we set up a filter using the bio gravel or any form of bio home. Mm. Okay, that's one of our trays done. And as I said, there's 300 grams in that. So each one of these trays will have 300 grams. That'll give us 1.2 kilos in total which for you guys in the US is 2.5 pounds or thereabouts. And as you can see, that packs in there pretty tight, but because it's round, you do have space between each piece, so the water can get through relatively unrestricted. So that is a good way to max out really small canisters or really small internal filters, basically any space where there isn't much space. Okay, so that's four trays of media, 1.2 kilos or 2.5 pounds, all clipped together, all secure. And on top of that, we got another tray, a piece of the All Pond Solutions fine pad in. Now on top of there, you could put a medium pad, however, 
I'm going to go for another coarse pad because I don't really want to restrict the flow too much through this thing. You could go medium though, that is fine. Oh, okay, I mean medium is okay, medium isn't fine, medium's medium, fine is fine. <laughs> because the flow through here is quite slow, the coarse pad should catch a lot of muck and it'll catch even more when we add another coarse pad in the very top one. And that's what I'm going to stick in there. I've cut a pad to fit into this section where the water pours into, but where it pours in, I've just chopped the nobbles off just to make that a little bit thinner, just so there's no restriction on the inflow. And here, I've just taken the nobbles off here as well to allow it to go underneath here where our little handle is. I'm not sure whether you can see, but there is actually a hole under there. And when I fit this, you should be able to tell why I've done that. There you go. So water pours in here. This is going to catch a lot of muck. And then it's free to go through here. And pour down here. And of course it'll pour straight through the, this foam and into the next tray. It shouldn't impede the movement of the water, but it will trap muck. So this is kind of like a primary settlement. Then we've got more settlement, and then we've got the fine pad, and then we've got all the media. Now then, just a quick note on the way to clean a canister filter. Obviously, with your foams, you would just take those out, give them a squeeze, ideally in water that you've drained off the tank in a bucket. Squeeze all the muck out, put them back in. Your fine pad, it would get too clogged to be of any use, and you can't clean these out again once they're clogged so that would be replaced that would be cleaned so that's really simple as far as the foam cleaning goes and with regard to the filter media trays all you do is just lift them out and if you notice that there was fine muck settled on here you would just drop that into your bucket of water that you've drained off the tank so it's nice mature water just give it a gentle shake and remove all the muck you'll find that when this is in water the fine particles and muck just drop straight out the bottom because of course the bottom of this is perforated you know lift it in and out of the water give it a shake a really gentle clean will be all this ever needs so that just slots in there like that good fit nice and secure you can see you're not wasting any space in there the head goes on clipped on securely and now we're ready to put this in the tank okay now remember this would generally go on the back of the tank but because you cannot really see in the back of there I'm gonna sit it on the side of this one so all we do is just drop it in like so that's it maybe better if I just take that light off I think Okay, so that's it fitted on the tank, and you can see that it is very vertical, very up and down. That's our little rubbery thing. To keep it straight, that's where the water is drawn in. Into there, and that's where the water is pushed out. And both of these are adjustable. I'm not quite sure why they're both adjustable, because if you throttle the intake, that will directly affect how much is pushed out likewise if you throttle down how much is pushed out it'll affect how much is pulled in so we'll try it with both of those unrestricted first and see what sort of a flow we get through this little ducks bill thing oh actually one more improvement i'm going to do is to alter that intake as well and on there i'm just going to put this little coarse sponge you don't need to do this, but if you don't mind cleaning this sponge out every few days, it will save you getting into your main canister. So that is a good idea, especially if you've got fry as well, because although that is quite a, a nice big bulbous end on there, you might get fry sucked into there. Having sponge on stops that from happening. But obviously it will mean that you need to clean that out a hell of a lot more than you need to get into here and clean this out. So it does save this from getting a lot of muck in. That does cause you a little bit more work, but it is very simple just to whip that off, give it a clean, put it back on.
Okay, so now that we know that it fits on here, I'm going to fill this container totally up with water. Ideally, it wants to be water from the tank, but because we've got no fish in here, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to fill it up out the tap. Because if we just attach this and expect the pump to draw water in, totally fill this up and then blow it back out again, we'll either be waiting a very long time or we'll knacker the pump. Just an indication of how much water we've put in here. It's just up to the top level of this tree, so it has got a little bit to go, but when we put the pump in, that should come right up to the top. Right, that's it on. Get it turned on and see if it will pump water. Bubbles coming out, that's a good sign. A little bit of muck coming out, that's a better sign. Hopefully you can see the bubbles coming out there. I'm just rocking this thing backwards and forwards just to expel all the air. Actually that sounds and looks like it's working a little bit better. I'll just tip it up like that. Yeah, there's definitely more current coming out there. That's it. That's the fella. Oh, a little bit more air in there. So you've got to fanny around with it a little bit to get the air out, but you do have to do that with all of these hang on the back canisters. Ah, they take a little bit of messing about with to get all the air out. Hopefully that's it. And that's really quiet. I'm in a very quiet room now. And I can barely hear it. That is good. Because obviously you've got this thing here hanging on the side or hanging on the back as it should be. You haven't got it hidden away in a cupboard. You haven't got it under the water. And it's still very quiet. Hopefully you can see that's a canny old floor that. That's a good floor. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. I'll just turn this floor down a little bit. See if it makes much of a difference. Yep, that's definitely slowed it down. Very good. And as I said before, you can put a spray bar on the end of there if you didn't want such a fast flow. That's pretty good. Especially for the price. This is just an example of what that sponge on the intake does. I haven't had any filter at all running in this tank for probably a couple of months, so there's a lot of smegs come off the sides and it's floating around. It's now getting stuck to that foam. If that foam wasn't there, it would be getting sucked up the pipe and going into the filter, clogging it. So that's why that's there. It's a first line of defence against the smeg that floats around in the tank. Now that filter is approximately 8 feet or 2.5 metres away from the camera. And I've turned the microphone gain up to maximum. I can still hear it from here, but only barely. Hopefully you won't even be able to hear it on the actual film on this video, you know. It's pretty quiet. I'm exceptionally impressed with this. And, I don't know, the price of it is just stupid. It's, it's I mean, little internal filters that are absolutely crap are sometimes twice the price of this particular thing. It holds 1.2 kilos of media, you know? That is so much more than any of the crappy little internal filters. It's an awesome buy, it really, really is. So 1.2 kilograms of bio gravel, which is 2.2 pounds, makes this thing really suitable if you want to see a full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and low nitrate, not just half a job, a full cycle, for a tank of roughly 120 litres, or 32 gallons. And obviously that isn't as much as the sea on here because the sea is for up to 200 litres, but we're talking full cycle. So 120 litres full cycle from this little thing that hangs on the back, it's pretty good. Or if your stock was heavier, um, so for example, Malawi cichlids, uh, goldfish, anything that pollutes a lot like um, predators 
or if you just have a lot of community fish in your tank this would be more suited for somewhere around about 60 litres for the full cycle and 60 litres is approximately 16 US gallons currently I can't find this on US Amazon or US eBay but I'm almost sure there will be something like this available it probably won't be sold under the Old Pond Solutions name because that is UK and Europe as far as I know but if I can find something between shooting this video and getting it uploaded I will put that in the video description so you guys in the US please check that out as well this hopefully isn't just a video specific to Europe now really this would make a cracking filter for a small to medium tank but it would also make a good emergency filter as well because of the low price of it if you wanted something to take over if your canister filter or your overhead filter or whatever broke down this is a great choice because it holds a canny bit of media and if your main filter breaks down all you've got to do is take the media and foams out of there put them into this plug this one in and your tank just goes on happy and healthy if you've got nothing in reserve and your main filter goes which it's prone to do over Christmas when everywhere is shut your fish are pretty much knackered so having something in reserve is always a good idea I know many people that will get a canister filter and then they'll buy another canister filter exactly the same just in case the first one breaks down and that is an expensive way to do it but it's a good idea this is a cheap way to do it and I'm not going to tell you how much this thing currently sells for because I can imagine that in two or three weeks when this becomes really really popular and gets featured on quite a few of the YouTube channels around the place the price of this might actually double because really it is worth double what it's actually being sold for at the moment I hope it never increases in price but if it does I don't want to give out wrong information you know so I'll just say at the moment it's exceptionally good value and the link to it is in the video description quiet big capacity it pumps enough water it comes with good fittings it's a really really good buy I definitely recommend this one but if you guys out there have got any experiences of this particular filter both good and bad please put the reports in the comment section that's what that's there for to share information thanks for watching see you next time As always guys, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want, on forums, Facebook pages, all sorts of websites, because if you found this video useful, the chances are somebody else will as well. And with the amount of really poor misleading information regarding filtration that is around in internet land, it makes sharing videos like this all the more important, because the more people are educated about filtration, the less dead fish there's going to be in this world.